You're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm Frank Moreno sitting in for John Tobacco, who's going to be joining us a little bit later on. But there are a number of big, hot-button political issues of the day that are being talked about all over the place, including in this studio. And we have two real experts who are never shy about sharing their own opinions on just about any, everything and anything uh, joining us. We're ple pleased to welcome Columbia University Professor John uh, David Eisenbach. I almost had you guys switch roles. <laughs> who, of course, was a uh, Democratic candidate for public advocate here in New York City. He's also a presidential historian. And uh, returning to battle him is former Republican candidate for city controller, John Burnett. He's also the co-chair of the Policy and uh, Public... Public... Affairs. W affairs. That's too long a title. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> Policy and Public Affairs Committee with the New York State Republican Party. He's a Newsmax columnist and the managing director of One Empire Group. Uh, gentlemen, let's begin with impeachment. Uh, yesterday, the White House essentially tells Congress, go to hell. We're not complying with any subpoenas. We're not going along. We don't even recognize this as an impeachment inquiry until you take a vote. John, is this a wise political move, and how's it going to play out legally? I think, you know, the public is actually getting an education in civics. When you look historically, and David, I believe, can back this up, the, the power that lies within the House is with the House, not with the Speaker. The Speaker cannot make a unilateral decision on an impeachment inquiry. A vote has to come to the floor. So we are a country of laws, and the White House is saying, let's follow the law, right? And the thing is, is that, yes, the White House did... Um, possibly break precedent to, to release the transcripts a couple of weeks ago. Um, but now, given that they released that a couple of weeks ago, seems like the Democrats, whatever they're thinking, whatever they request, the White House can release. And the White House is saying, no, let's follow procedure to make sure that, you know what, you and, and, and record everyone who wants to proceed with this inquiry, you know, so that you, way it's documented. You guys follow politics more closely than just about anybody, but I talk to rank and file people on the street, and eventually this all just becomes white noise. They don't know even the details of Ukraine Gate and why they wanted this ambassador to testify and why they're talking about impeachment. So I'm curious what you think, John, and I'll ask David to weigh in as well what the political implications are of, this, uh, are of this, going into the primaries, going into the general election, and then going into the congressional elections. How does it all play out? You know, I think that the uh, electorate will be eventually become fatigued. So this is going to come down to whether or not they agree with process or political antics, not searching for something that Democrats are, are trying to find a fact but they're actually f falling into folly. So they're not actually landing on anything solid, but it's good political theater. So it all depends upon the electorate whether they go for the political theater or the process. David, um, where do you think we are first on the merits? Is yeah. this, uh, based on what we know about Ukraine and the failure to produce documents, is this reach the level, the level of an impeachable offense? Well, what we view? have to remember is that the impeachment process is a political process, not a legal process. Mm -hmm. So how you define a high crime is really up to whoever's in control of the House. And they're going to impeach Donald Trump. There's no question. Now, politically, how does this play out? The fact of the matter is that if the Dow is above 25,000, as I said that before, right. Donald Trump's going to get reelected. Absolutely. Is it below? Right. Then it becomes a big question. So uh, time will tell on that. So, uh, David, though, uh, in terms of uh, what this does for future presidencies, doesn't this mean that every president is going to be impeached. That is the danger. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There, there's no question about it that impeachment will be just become a necessary process that every president will have to go through regardless of party. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, John, let me ask you this. In terms of uh, how an impeachment inquiry goes forward from here, uh, do you think they're doing the right strategy in terms of, it seems to be basically stalling and refusing to comply and complaining about the impeachment inquiry. We should not be shocked about this at all, Frank. What this is, how this is playing out is the typical Democratic playbook, right, in terms of not really want to resolve anything. They really want the issue and keep kicking the ball, punting, so to speak, while calling different plays that really never come to fruition, right, because they want to damage, try to damage President Trump going into the election. Because the thing is, is that when you look at how, like, at, like David pointed out, if the stock market remains above 25,000, 
President Trump will get elected. If President Trump actually makes headway in terms of deal, brokering a deal with China in whole or in part, that's a positive for the markets. That's a positive for jobs. It's a positive for future growth. They know that that's what they're contending with. At the same time, they know that they're pushing a socialist agenda. So what they're doing is trying to try, trying their best to damage Trump, uh, President Trump. But it may not play out well. Why? Because the people will become fatigued with this nonsense. And the White House is absolutely right to push process. Let's follow the law, not David, politics. David, you're a Democrat. I mean, yeah. it, it, based on the Democrats that you talk to on a regular basis, are they happy with this impeachment probe? Or uh, do they kind of view this as not the best use of Congress's time? The Democrats are just determined to get rid of Trump one way or the other. Whether they have to wound him going into the election, that'd be great. Whether they actually get an impeachment, highly unlikely, that'd be great too. Uh, they're willing to throw Joe Biden under the bus in the process, no problem, uh, as long as they take out Trump. All right. Um, speaking of 2020, uh, we saw last week that Bernie Sanders uh, suffered a heart attack. Uh, he did his first interview recently after coming out of the hospital and says he's going to be returning to the campaign trail, but it's going to be done a little bit more slowly. This is what Bernie Sanders had to say. Everything that happens every day weighs on how people feel about you. And my own view is that, and, and I think it's the voters' view, you look at the totality of who a candidate is. You look at... However you look at it, Bernie Sanders was in the top three and is in the top three on the Democratic primary field. Do you think this heart attack raises questions about voters in terms of his uh, age and durability? And do you think maybe he may not have the energy to campaign as vigorously as he would like throughout all these early primary states? It certainly states, does, David? right? Uh, having worked on presidential campaigns, it is a physical grind mm -hmm. for uh, these candidates. So uh, he's got to think twice for his life. Uh, here. Uh, this is also very good news uh, for Elizabeth Warren because it means that the Bernie people uh, are going to really, the majority of them are going to shuffle over to Warren, and this is bad news for Joe Biden. Uh, John, at least uh, he went to a place where he had, they had universal government health care, right? <laughs> well, I agree with David, actually. You know, this doesn't go well for uh, Bernie. This is actually even months before the primary season even kicks off. This is not even between the primary and general, right? Yeah. So, so this is not going to go well for Bernie. He's going to start slipping fast. Biden is already wounded. Elizabeth Warren, the excitement is really not there. And you know what? I'm hearing talks from the left. Not, don't, we shouldn't be surprised if Hillary Clinton actually gets back into the race. Oh, oh God. Well, we're, right, we're, right? Because, because the middle... That, that, that middle vote in the independent voters, that's, what, that's who's going to decide this race. Yeah, right? but they, they said no to her. Go, they're not going for Elizabeth they, Warren. They said no. That middle said no to Hillary four And they'll years say ago. no to Elizabeth Warren. Well, I, and if the know. stock market even stays somewhere around 25,000, we'll have President Trump the for The point is, but years. in terms of the primary, Elizabeth Warren is in pole position right now. So uh, in terms of the debate we'll that we're going to see next week, uh, there are two new candidates joining the debate stage that weren't at the last debate. Tulsi Gabbard, who we've seen before, and uh, Tom Steyer. In 10 seconds, uh, and I'm going to ask you guys to stick around if you can, uh, but in 10 seconds, give me your take on how you think the next debate is going to be any different from what we saw previously. I think that it's going to be a free-for-all. I think the closer we get to the kickoff in January, February of the primary season, I think they're actually going to see blood in the water. Bernie's weak, Biden's weak, and I think Elizabeth Warren might be the target. David, this is the opportunity then for Tulsi Gabbard to make the argument that Saudi Arabia is a problem, not an ally, uh, an enemy, and that foreign policy needs to be discussed. She's more. the only one who's been saying that. She's and the I, only I one. She's going to hit it strong because she's got to remain in the in the fray. All right. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you are watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. David Eisenbach on the left, John Burnett on the right. They're going to stick around with us to uh, help break down not only the presidential race, but where we're going with these China and Hong Kong protests and some very controversial issues being considered by the Supreme Court. We'll get into that and a whole lot more. The Crypto Cowboy is here. Tom Keogh is here. Hopefully, after this commercial, you'll be here as well. This is Newsmax TV. I'm Frank Moreno.